So, now we've got the next talk on Git issue from Diomedes Spinellis. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Why are we here? Why would we want to run Git issue? I'll give you six reasons why Git issue is the best thing since sliced bread. First of all, it's an issue management system, so a bug tracker that doesn't need any sophisticated infrastructure, any system running behind it. You don't need a database, a server that needs to be specially configured, anything like that. It's very easy to install, as I will show you. Just clone the repository and you run make install, and there you have it. It's decentralized, so anybody anywhere in the planet can create an issue, can comment on it, can change its status, add a milestone, add a, assign it to somebody, and things get merged together in the central repository. How does this happen? Of course, it uses Git as its uh, backend. And uh, as an advantage, because it's decentralized, is that you can use it anywhere, even if you don't have internet connectivity. So on the plane, I read somebody complaining a few days ago that the train they were on didn't have Wi-Fi. You can still get, use a Git issue, and then you push the changes, or you pull the changes that have been made. It's also transparent, so the files that it uses, the structure is documented, and it's available, so you can use your favorite tools. You can grab through issues, you can find and select them. You can apply filters to it. You can even use your editor if you are brave enough to change things on the fly in the repository. That's absolutely allowed, and then you can push the issues back in. As you will appreciate, it uses Git as a backend, so all the goodies we have with Git still work here, the credentials that you have, the server that you are using, the commands that you know, the many years you invested to learn its arcane interface, everything is there to be used. Also, it uses the Unix command line tools philosophy. If you do not not sure why this is good, there is a MOOC that I'll be starting on in March. Go there in order to find out. But the truth is that you can use all the tools that you know on top of the files that it has. As an addition, as part of the Google Summer of Code last year, Viron Drossos did amazing work and integrated into Git issue the ability to pull issues from GitHub and GitLab and also put, push issues back there to the issue database of these two systems. So you can also use Git issue in order to transfer issues from one system to the other or ensure that your issues are in a transparent format that you can use and control on your own. Let me give you a brief demo of how it works. So to install it, you just clone the repository. And then you run install or as a root user in order to copy the files to the system directories. Or if you don't have root access, you set the prefix to your home directory in order to install them in your home directory. With git issue in it, you create a new repository. Let's create a new issue. You can do it in the command line by, by specifying the subject line. Or you can use git issue new and an editor will pop up. Now you see you have two issues here. You can use git issue comment to add a comment on the specific issue, again with my editor. Uh, or I can tag it with a specific tag. And it tells me that it has tagged it. I can tag another tag here. If I now remove a tag, I can use the minus R option. I can assign it to somebody using, again, the issue code as a, to identify it. Add another watcher here. Here I list the specific uh, issue. And now here is the magic. I can add a remote origin to this uh, issue database. And now I can use uh, push in order to move my changes all upstream. Assume now somebody else is using git issue. They can clone this repository. And then the, if they list the issues, the issues are back at the host that they were using. They can create another issue there. I'm, create, I'm specifying the subject line here and push the changes back up to that repository that is shared between these two people. There's a show command in order to see what uh, an issue contains. 
or a specific issue here, a longer one. I can again pull issues from a remote and list and I will see a new issue appearing here in the other host. Now let's try the another example. I will now get issues from GitHub issues. So I initialize a new issue tracker with git issue in it and now I specify that I want to import issues from GitHub using this URL and it imports existing GitHub issues. So issues that GitHub uh, is tracking, I can see them here. I can see a specific issue who's been assigned, tags and so on, all the things that uh, uh, GitHub issues support. I can change things again, so add a milestone for example or change the due date for GitLab. There are some things that GitLab supports and some things that GitHub supports. We have the uh, superset of the two. I can close an issue and then I can export the issues back into GitHub, GitHub issues or GitLab. I will need to have the credentials, especially if I want to pull more than a few issues. So this is how the system appears in practice. Thank you. You also get some uh, goodies, so subcommand autocompletion or SHA autocompletion. More goodies, you can use the git commands that uh, you love and uh, know, so for example rebase in order to directly change things. Every th change you made is recorded as a git commit. You can dump an issue in JSON format to process it in another way and there is a log of the issues that are there. For help there is of course uh, a list of all the commands available automatically generated from the source code so that it's always complete and something I consider important we should all try in our projects a nine page manual proper Unix manual page. How does it work internally? I will finish with that. So internally what you see is a dot issues directory and inside it there are templates for the description and comment. You can modify it and commit them and all your colleagues will share them and use their own. An issues directory and for every issue you have the SHA hash which is created through the hash of the git commit that creates the issue so you know it's almost impossible to have a duplication here and for every issue you have the description, the tags, the milestone, the comments and other things that are associated with that issue. Comments is a director and again each comment is associated with the SHA hash of the com git commit that created that issue. It's a configuration folder and details about the imports so that you can stay in sync and push and pull the things that are exactly needed from GitHub or uh, GitLab. We will hopefully be running Google Summer of Code again next year so if you have any cool ideas you want to add or if you want to work on perhaps a graphical user interface if you feel to don't feel sure about always using the command line feel free to look for it up and uh, apply. This brings me to the end of this uh, presentation. Thank you very much. Okay, so we've got a while for questions. Is there any Git part, Git specific part in it? It's uh, written in a shell, as a shell script, full of Git commands. So you have to go and replace every Git command with the corresponding other version control system. I understand the question is if there are Git specific parts in it, right? Yes. yes. So it's uh, heavily Git uh, dependent. You would have to add an abstraction layer to interface between different systems. But there are text files and the Git specific things that are done are push, pull, commit. So there are few. The rest are things that are available in every system. You, think you commit files in the structure that I showed. Yes? Um, of most interest is integration of GitHub. And what happens if there is a conflict? Let's say I'm trying to export, somebody modified that description already, I modified the description, what happens? Okay, what happens with the conflicts? In general, the idea is that the, the, the same thing that happens with, the, with the, when you pull data from a repository, you get a conflict and you have to resolve it. 
Now, if you go upstream uh, and you push things uh, up, things might get uh, modified with the truth, source of truth that you have because uh, GitHub doesn't have a, a way to do this uh, atomically. So a proper process would be to pull things from, uh, to import the issues again, resolve any conflicts, you can do that, commit them, and then push and hopefully nobody has done that in that small window. Yes? Right. Uh, the question is whether we can have the numbers of uh, GitHub issues. I think this is something that can be easily done. Should be three lines of uh, code. It's a very good uh, idea. If you put it up in an issue, uh, I hack it in the afternoon. <laughs> I think uh, you had the two questions, right? Yeah. Um, yes. How could we automate the GitHub uh, process so that when things change on GitHub, they automatically mirror it here? I, I would build on top on it, on top of it. So at some endpoint, that would under listen for those events and then invoke a command. It's not there, but I don't think it should be difficult to do. Yes. Have you looked at the integration with Jira? Have I looked with uh, the integration with Jira? No, not uh, yet. Yes. Hi, I wanted to ask if you will try to push it upstream, I mean to Git source directly, like be part of Git. So the question is if I have tried to push it upstream, be part of Git, if I have commun com of Git or uh, GitHub? Yeah, I mean Git, like ah, Git. be part of the Git, not just additional uh, thing, but just part of the okay. Git. Uh, the question is if I have tried to push it upstream to Git, no I haven't because the plugin interface of Git is beautiful. Uh, maybe I should, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, so please uh, try to push it upstream. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you for the suggestion. If anyone wants to share experience of how to do that, please talk to me. Uh, hi, how does it compare to uh, bugs everywhere? How it, does it compare to bugs uh, Everywhere, uh, I have a list of, uh, at the end of the readme file, I have a list that bugs everywhere is another system that works in the same uh, way. There I have found another five systems around the same idea. At the end of the readme file, I have short one-liners that have the comparisons. I don't remember exactly for each system how it compares off the top of my head. Yes? Is there a way to close an issue by a commit message? I would add a commit hook again in git issue to issue another git command that would close the issue. So it's a hook plus issuing the two commands that would close the issue when it grabs for the issue number. So you don't have pre-crafted hook to put in. It's not pre-crafted. Now it means that we have to, have to create a plugin mechanism for git issue. Uh, but it's an interesting idea and very... I'm very encouraged with all these ideas and uh, things that uh, can be built on top of it. That's the beauty of Unix tools and the Unix philosophy. Any other questions? No. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again. <laughs>